Well, what is going on? Welcome back to Clayton Schick Outdoors. Of course, I'm Clayton Schick. This is the beautiful outdoors, and I might have possibly the nicest day of December right now, today. I'm gonna take advantage of it. I'm gonna fish outside a little bit. I did bring the flip over because I like to fish into the evening a little bit too, as well. And just enjoy my day. But there's like zero wind right now. It's like zero degrees Celsius. So that's 32 degrees Fahrenheit. And it's supposed to get a little bit warmer yet. What a day, like I'm gonna enjoy it. As you can see, I got the side by side on this body of water in particular. I've got eight, nine inches of solid, clear, beautiful ice. I did go on an adventure yesterday with my buddy, Mr. 30. We checked five, six spots on a different lake and we ended up not fishing the whole day. I'm gonna roll a short little clip right here of how fast ice can, can change. <laughs> not enough ice there, Adam. So yeah, as you can see, spud bar like right through. The funny thing is, is I wasn't even like actually spudding hard, which is really scary. I was just literally like spudding to kind of readjust my grip and that's why I lost control of the spud bar. Like, and that can happen so quick. It's another reason to keep that long rope on there is you have a better chance of grabbing it if you do sail it through the ice. It does happen when you, when you least expect it. Anyways, let's get some holes drilled. Let's get some uh, a finicky fooler out. I might even put out two to start with and not even fish and jig to start with until I get organized. I'm not sure. We'll get one of them out anyway and get fishing this day though. Like, I honestly wish you all could be here for this day right now. Let's do it. I think we just gotta pop a hole right here to start with, right? What a day. All we need now is some biting walleye. What a day. Probably one of the best things about fishing outside for a bit is I can decide if I'm gonna like stay here for the whole day or whether I'm going to move or I need to be, say, where my finicky fooler ends up. It's nice when you're not set up. Though with a flip over, it is a lot easier to move quickly than it is compared to a hub shelter. Oh, 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 oh. Flag up. Oh, he's still there. He's still there. First fish, live minnow. Okay. Oh, pike. Maybe? Thinking maybe a pike. It's a walleye, it could be a gutter. This is a little bit up, a little bit shallower. I'm thinking it's a pike. It's acting like a, it's acting like a little snot rocket. But we never know, we're gonna treat it like it's a, a walleye until we see it for sure. What do we got? If it's a walleye, it's a big one, but it's, it's just, it's got those, it doesn't have big head shakes, it's got like a pole. Yeah, okay. Whoa. Okay, buddy, I get it, I get it, I get it, I get it. Our first fish of the day is a little snot rocket. He's got a lot of energy. We'll get him back. That's definitely not what we're after, but we will take it for our first fish on the board. It's nice thing about being, that's the nice thing about being so nice out is there's no problem handling this fish outside at all today. I looked over and I saw my rod tip just slowly bending. Oh, it's gonna be a pike, isn't it? Look how fast it's running. That's gonna be a pike probably, which is gonna break off most likely with a live minnow. Surprised the last one didn't. Might be a walleye, you never know. Walleye could have felt tension and just took off too. It's always possible. It's always possible. Usually a walleye doesn't run that fast. This thing just peeled away. It's small, whatever it is. Or just coming right at me. Oh, no, it is a walleye. Wow, okay. Okay, that's a good, uh, that's a good sign. Might not have to move. Might be able to just stay in this spot if we catch a couple more, because it is slow, slow period right now. But this hole cover always stays in way better once you get a little bit further into the season. 
Looks like a nice eater though. We'll probably keep him. Well, he is a perfect 17 incher. He's gonna go home in the bucket and he might be some blackened walleye, I think, this guy right here. So I said that these little hole covers work better when it's like, when there's more snow, you kind of like lock in your edges. They actually work amazing on an eight inch and they work okay with the 10 inch. Like they do the job perfect, but sometimes that fish gets caught on its way up. Ideally like a 12 inch one or an 11 inch one would be like perfect for the 10 inch holes, but it, it does work. I'm starting to see more fish on the live scope, which is giving me a lot of confidence just to kind of hang out in this area. It is an area where I've scored some nice fish in the past. So I do have confidence already. It's just obviously fish have fins and fish, fish, fish swim around. You never know what's going to be good and what's not. And you always take that risk when you get to your spot. And the first thing you do is set up a shelter with not even seeing if there's fish moving around that area that day. Things change so fast with bait movement, with weather, the sun, everything, right? Like I had a false flag and I came over here. And I just grabbed the rod for a second and there's still a fish down here. So even though he drew, the flag went off and he dropped it, he come, came back, which is a lot of times with the walleye, he definitely, if the flag goes off and you get there and there's no fish, just fish it for a few seconds. He easily could catch a fish that way. Okay, our third walleye of the day, about a little 15 incher. I've got some confidence here for sure, but so far, it's all a little bit shallower, so I still might set up the shack, but it might be a bit shallower. I'm in about 17, 18 feet, and the flags are going off in about probably 12, 14 feet, so I might move up the bank just a little bit yet. Oh, flag, 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 I heard it. I heard it, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. My line's obviously frozen a little bit. Still there though. Oh, I didn't put the hole cover on either. That's just a recipe for disaster, Clayton. That's how you lose your rod. Here we go. So I haven't caught a fish over there yet. Everything has been shallow. But I still have faith over there. I really do. Just another small walleye here. Okay, about another 15 incher. Going home. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> what to do? What to do? What to do? What to do? What to do, what to do, what to do, what to do. Flag's hot, live minnow's hot. Can't get them to eat the active bait at all, but they're sure eating live minnow. The question is, will it be a walleye or a pike? Whatever it is, it's not that big. It's not that big. Small, small pike, small pike. Well, there's been way more fish shallow, especially up by my finicky fooler in that area. I'm gonna, I'm gonna move up and fish a little bit shallower, I think, for a little bit and see what happens. just getting set up over here and my flag pops I think moving shallower probably with my main line is smart too because I'm seeing way more fish up shallow than I am deeper and not that the other thing's deep either like it's only 18 feet so it feels a little bit better okay okay this is good this is good might be I think another perfect eater so this one is uh, lunch as pain of it is to move while you're ice fishing, especially filming, you just gotta do it. And that flag has been going off quite a bit compared to what I was seeing over there. And this is only a, a 75 foot move, but gotta move where the fish are. Okay, getting our live minnow down on that jackknife jig, getting it reset up. All I'm doing is I'm dropping it all the way down to the bottom. So I'll wait till it stops moving. Like I said, it's only about 12 feet. And we're on the bottom, right there. So I'm closing the bail. I'm reeling until it just starts to get tight. 
and then I'm grabbing right here. I'm like, okay, so I want to go off about 18 inches off the bottom right here. I lift and I reel up until my fingertips get to the end of the rod. And then I set it up. There's my, oh, record. There's actually a fish going to my live minnow right now. I just turned to look. It's going to, it's going to pop. Yep. <laughs> wow. I just got it reset up. Haven't even jigged yet. Hopefully it's a walleye because it looked decent if it's a walleye. If it's a walleye, it's going to be decent. And if it's a pike, it's a, uh, a medium ish, a small one. If it's a walleye, it's a gooder. I think it's a pike. Pretty sure that is a pike. Caught a quick glance, glance at it and it was, it looked pretty pikish. Could be a, if it's a walleye, it's a, it's a big one, but no, it's a pike. That's a pike. Zit, 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 zit. Pike run right there. Oh, well, walleye pike, walleye pike. Like I said, about a medium sized pike here. Easy, stay in the hole, stay in the hole, stay in the hole. Okay, don't come out. Okay, okay. I'm trying to set him down quick. Hooks out. I'm not. He's got lots of energy, so I'm not going to show him off again. But about a 30 inch pike, probably. Okay. Well, let's get that set up again. That happened quick. Oh, geez. I just got this drop back down again, and a fish is on it already. <laughs> that is amazing. And this time it's a walleye. Walleye pike, walleye pike. Looks like a perfect eater too. Okay, okay. Another one for the frying pan. Well, just for the record, I haven't caught a fish on the jigging rod yet. It's all been on the finicky fooler. And the really ironic thing is, is I went for so many years with just fishing inside the shack. Now granted, it's easier for the video purpose, but I just thought, you know what? Let's utilize my second line more often. And when I'm not having two lines in the shack, let's put a, a dead stick out. I do that lots with like pike fishing. I'll put a pike rod out when I'm walleye fishing, but right now it's actually set up for, for walleye. I've caught some pike on it, but it's definitely set up more for walleye than for pike. Might be coming this way. Oh, something ate it right off the bottom. Might've been him. It did charge over there quick. Finally caught one on the jigging spoon. Oh, I got another fish down there. And drop down as I'm showing this off. Get down there, spoon. Get down there. Come on. Okay, I'm a little guy, but I finally caught one on the active rod. Ooh, what's that? Ooh, 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 ooh. Fish just dropped right to my spoon down on the bottom. You didn't see my spoon because I got it angled kind of funny, but I saw the fish. Oh, it just went at it again. Come on. Come on, it's not very big, <laughs> but so it wasn't the, it's good to know it wasn't my, uh, the, my bait or presentation or anything like that. It was literally just being over 75 feet because it just got set up not long ago and I've cracked two right away. I like it. I like it. This one's the biggest of the day. Nice fish. Nice fish. The old dinner bell right there. It ain't chartreuse, it ain't no use. Okay, biggest of the day, probably about a 21-ish. Going back, 75 feet. That's literally all it was, 75 feet. So before I was like, right now I got this structure where, you know what, I'll zoom out here a little bit and I'll show it. So to the right of me, drops off deeper right and actually there's a fish there at 50 feet right where i was set up who knows maybe it's time of day too but we're just gonna say it's a 75 foot move anyway i've got deeper water over to my right and then it comes up and it plateaus at like 10 11 feet here for a little bit and then it's got this another little hump right there that's like a foot it's not very big but it does come up a bit so it's like comes out of the the deeper steep bank plateaus just a little bit and then kind of up again to another lift off and right there in that uh plateau is where i set up oh that live minnow i just heard my flag pop and moved over the dead stick here not the dead stick my jigging rod too and boom 
Okay, okay. <laughs> this is deadly. I was able to hear that pop because there's no wind. It's right behind me. Quite nice. Anyways, we are on fish. And we are definitely not going anywhere for the night now. Oh, perfect. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Anyways, before I got interrupted by that fish, deeper, bank, plateau, and then a little bit of a, a drop off again. Not This one's not big over here, but this one over here is definitely bigger. That one drops off 10 to 20 feet within, within 30 feet-ish, 35 feet-ish, something like, something like that. So it's a pretty quick drop. Well, I'm very content with staying here for the rest of the day. It's only 1.30 and I've done really well. The question's going to be, am I going to pop up the shelter at all? And I don't think I am. Like I'm fishing, look at no toque, no gloves, no mitts, nothing. I think I'm just going to enjoy fishing outside because this could be the last day I get to fish outside till March, you know, April. So we're going to enjoy this outdoors, the super fresh air and just soak it in. There's no wind, so it's so easy to fish outside. And we'll just, we'll have a good day. I'm already having a good day. So relaxed. It's hard not to enjoy your day when the weather's like this. And I'm, I'm all alone, literally. I am all alone. Fish going up to my live minnow. Going up, going up. Come on, go up and grab it. He's got 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 it. This is the perfect rod for this. The drench. The drench. We're coming, buddy. We're coming. It's shallow, shallow water, so don't have much time before they're at the top of the hole here. Oh, maybe my, maybe my fourth eater right here. I'll have my limit. Sometimes I take my limit home. Sometimes I take nothing home. If I'm going to clean fish, though, I'd rather just clean four, and then I'll have them fresh that night or the next day. We'll let this one go. He's 16. We'll go for, since we've already got three, we'll, we'll leave room for one that maybe is hooked deeply or like the perfect 17 and a half incher. I'm gonna have to say these chairs are pretty comfortable. When you look at them, you're like, that does not look comfy at all. When I first got it, I was like, oh, I'm not gonna like that chair. And then I asked somebody, I'm like, what's the deal with the chair? And he goes, have you spent any time in it yet? And I'm like, no, he's like, just sit in it. He's like, you'll, you'll see, he goes, we have a sister company that designs tree stands. So they design chairs to sit in all day. So he's like, we use like what we do in our tree stands, we use it in our flip overs. And I'm, I'm actually really comfy. They don't look comfortable at all, but this is one of the more comfortable chairs I've sat in. Like that's not a modification or something like that. This is, this is nice. And this is the Escape 2800 series. I just don't think I'll be popping it up today at all. So we'll show it off sometime in a future video. But that's what I'll be running for a flip over this year. And we're getting to that time now where I can, I can spend some time. I could almost have my sled out here. There's a skiff of snow. I feel like I could have brought my sled. Actually, I didn't need the side by side. I'd rather use my snowmobile for sure. When I have Carter with me, I'll take the Ranger most likely. Ah, sled too. I got it. It's two up seed. You can easily ride two on there, but going to be spending some time in a sled as well with this thing. Touring around, touring around Northern Manitoba a little bit, something like that. Yeah. Backcountry stuff. My favorite. Oh, oh, fish came in here. Come on. Eat it off the bottom. Right off the bottom. That fish came in from over here somewhere, I think. Walleye. 
Walleye. I've seen lots of walleye cruise around on the bottom. This is really good for this time of night. Or time of afternoon, it's not night. It's definitely not night yet. The little guy, well, a medium guy, probably. That one would be close to 17-ish. I, but I might just wait till one gets hooked deeper for it. Like I said, a selective harvest for the last one. December is easily my favorite month to fish walleyes through the ice. It's why you see I get a lot of, or I do a lot of walleye videos early season. These walleyes are just, they're starting to eat aggressively for the winter. As in, they don't start to eat very much through, they don't, they don't eat a lot throughout the rest of the winter when it starts to get really cold. They go deeper, they slow their metabolism down. They're just, you can still catch them midwinter, just not as many. You can still catch big ones though in midwinter too, if you set up on some right areas. But again, like I said, you're not gonna catch as many fish. And you have to really be careful too, because they do spend time deeper. You have to really watch out for barotrauma issues with them. You don't wanna be hurting those walters. Oh, oh, fish here coming in plus one right below me. I feel like this one coming in might be a little bit bigger than this one though. So we're gonna try to get back down there quick. Okay, 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 come on, come on, fast, 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 fast. Easy, <laughs> easy. I don't see that other one anymore, but we're gonna still drop down, he might be in the area. Oh, my flag just went too. Okay, maybe he went over there then. And see if he's still on there. Yep, oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> oh, it's ripping. Oh, this it must be pike, right? <laughs> this is a walleye. It's gonna be a nice one. <laughs> That's probably a pike. Question is, how big of a pike? <laughs> Give me a nice incidental 40 incher, right? But that's the dream anyway. Or maybe just be a 30 inch walleye. That'd be even better. That'd be even better. It's stuck on the ice, there we go. Oh, that's a bad time for the head camera. All good, head camera battery died. Broke off, medium pike. Like 32, 33 incher. But what a life. Ooh, this fish shot right up off the bottom. Oh, it shot up off the bottom and ate it. Oh, Clayton, you donkey. So fish cruising in here pretty quick from the, from the drop off. Get over here. There's another one. It's just about to get in front of, so hopefully it doesn't deflect it or anything. Right there, there's another fish there on the bottom. Hoping that fish doesn't hang them up. Get over here. I'll see that lots where it's like one fish is coming in and it kind of meets up with another fish and it, oh, that fish just took a swipe at it and it just changes what it's doing completely. Okay, get over here. Oh, flag just went. I'm working this fish too, but I gotta go to the flag, right? This is when it's, I don't like having two, I guess this could be a better one too. Or it's that, maybe it's that one that took a swipe at me that came in quick, probably a pike. Huh? Doesn't feel pikeish. Doesn't feel pikeish. Feels more like a walla. What do we got? Oh, stuck on the bottom. There we go. Come on. It's not small. It's not small. Yeah, not a bad fish at all. Okay. Show them off to the main camera real quick. Beauty fish, 20, 21 incher, going back home. This has been a great day. I'm so pumped right now. I'm just so content and so happy. It's so good. Hopefully maybe I can even like catch a couple more fish, wrap this video up and start something about a primetime bite or something like that too. So far, this little guy's been the ticket over there. A one eighth ounce jackknife jig from Acme with that live minnow. It could just has so much free movement on this jig, the way that shank is set up there. It pivots side to side. Have it set up on a 39 inch drench from Frostbite, the Vanta Black series, and paired with a 1000 diesel reel. Eight pound braid, 
eight pound floral, I think is what I have on that one right now. could be 10 pound floral possibly. Uh, it's suffix 832 ice braid and then suffix advanced, advanced floral carbon. And that's what I have on here too. This rod is set up with, uh, this is the smoke show here, 37 medium light. A lot of fish down there. This is set up with a uh, 10 pound suffix 832 on a diesel 1000 and then 10 pound uh, suffix advanced fluorocarbon. And I've got on my lucky, but it ain't chartreuse. It ain't no use. Insanity pepper dinner bell. But uh, the finicky fooler has been much hotter so far. Oh, hopefully I didn't sit on that jig. It still blows my mind. I was 75 feet that way and catching nothing. And I just slid over. Now, obviously I was catching some fish because my, my tip up was out. I was catching fish with that. But it's like some areas are like feeding flats, right? Fish come in to feed. Some areas are a highway where they're moving. And then, yeah, some areas they're actively feeding. This feels like they're, they're feeding over here. Eventually I'll zoom in a bit on the graph just so I get a better view for the viewers. Right, right now I always, oh, I missed that one. <laughs> right now I, I tend to like look a lot further just to kind of see what's happening. He gave me a second chance though. So I'm looking a lot further just so I can see fish moving, moving instead of necessarily looking right below. So even though I'm, I'm losing some detail with looking further out, you're just learning so much more. It's not a bad fish. Not a bad fish at all. Another nice 21, 22 incher. Going back. Look at this. I can dry and warm my hands off right now. There's no wind so I can run this heater outside. It's perfect. Got a fish rolling in here. Up the bank. Come eat the dinner bell. The dinner bell has been such a good spoon for me in the past. I mostly used the 3 16th ounce spoon. When I, I first started using the dinner bell, I used a lot of the 3 8 ounce spoon. But when I'm using the 3 16 ounce, sometimes I'll use bait, a minnow head, or an eyeball, something like that. When I'm ripping the bigger spoon, the 3 8 ounce one, I don't use bait ever. I just rip it pretty aggressively, muck around in that dirt down there, pop it up. And then kind of once in a while I'll play with it like this, but this is more like for this spoon when I'm like fishing for fish that aren't as aggressive and I'm using the smaller spoon, the 3 16 ounce with, three, three ounce with bait. Then I'm like trying to like kind of just coax them up a little bit, right? Most of the, like when I'm fishing the 3 8 ounce size dinner bell, this one's, this one's rose gold here. We'll pull the two spoons size. Oh, it's, so you can see here for size. So when I'm fishing the, three eighths one, three eighths ounce one. Uh, get out of there, this one. I'm, I'm hammering it pretty aggressively. I'm flopping it down in the dirt, pop it up, hammering it around. And this one I'm fishing a lot more dainty. I, I used to use this one a lot more. I'm starting to use the three sixteen ounce quite a bit. I do like having the three eighths ounce though on a rod at times just to like rip it around real good. It's one of the spoons that I use at more of a flutter spoon. It, it does go out a little bit to the side. The, the dinner bell is kind of more on the spot with a little bit of a hybrid flutter spoon. The big one though will go out pretty far, but not out say as far as, um, oh, what's the one I used to use? A, a slender spoon I use, that's a great spoon too. That one goes out pretty far. Uh, a VMC Tingler, I think it's called. That one goes out pretty far. And then you have your hybrid ones, which I consider these, the dinner bells a hybrid, where they're a f classified basically as a flutter spoon, but they also can, you can pound them on a spot. Another one like that would be the Acme Ice Winder. I find that one to be like a, uh, an on the, not on necessarily on the spot, but like a hybrid spoon. I'm just talking nonsense here, but you have like your, in my opinion, you have three spoon classifications. You have your pounding on the spot, like your Northland Buckshot, your Castmaster, your Rattlemaster, um, there's lots of different spoons like that, obviously. And then you have your hybrids, which is your ice winder, side winder, your dinner bells. I can't think of any of the other ones off the top of my head. There's probably less hybrid spoons, I'd say, than anything. And then you have a more of a flutter style spoon, which is like your VMC Tingler. I'm sure it's a VMC Tingler. Uh, a slender spoon. I know Mike Harris has a new one out called the Wingding. I bet you that one is flutters out pretty far. There's so many different like spoons, right? But they do have their, in my opinion, their three classifications. Your pound on the spot, your hybrids, and then your full flutter spoons. 
That's like the three styles. And you'll find that the, the big flutter spoons, you'll fish them super aggressive. What's nice to like the full, full flutter spoon is if I'm fishing 20, 25 feet of water, I can drop it and it can go literally shoot out like 20 feet that way. And then you can just pop it all the way back. And then next time you shoot it down, it might shoot out that way. So you can cover a bunch of water, not just like a little radius below the hole. They all have their time in their place, 100%. It's, you just gotta learn how to fish with all of them. I'd say the most common one is that pound on the spot spoon. Lots of you always watch lots of people like see it and they just like kind of coax the mark up real, real, real slow, real slow. But sometimes those pound on the spot spoons, like get them down in the dirt and just muck up that dirt down there. And as soon as the profile of the spoon appears, the walleye will just whoosh, lunch in and grab it. Lunch in, lunge in. English is hard today. What a life. Oh, this would be a pound on the spot spoon. The scissor kick from Frostbite. That's a gooder. I should actually use this. I haven't, I haven't used the scissor kick a pile. It's such a good bait. Let's put the scissor kick on for a bit. I have so much confidence in the dinner bell. Not that I don't have confidence in the scissor kick. I caught some pretty good fish with it last year. It just seems to always take a back seat to a lot of other spoons. So scissor kick is going on. Oh, fish here at 15 feet. Coming over, drop it down the dirt. He's coming. He's coming. He's going away. He's going away. Oh, that fish just shot straight up. <laughs> you like, you'd have to try to not catch a fish like that. Like they just, it's basically suicidal. The scissor kick strikes. Oh geez, that fish just shot straight up. It's another one of those fish you probably have to try to not catch. Oh. He might give me another chance. <laughs> Like I said, you have to try pretty hard to not catch a fish like that. Oh boy. Well, a couple fish on the scissor kick anyway. I'll show this guy off here and try to catch this other fish. Oh, I spooked him, I think. But a nice, I don't know, 17-ish maybe? I might measure him. If he's 17, he might get the ax, even though we're starting to, uh, no, we're gonna throw him back because there's another fish coming right here. Yeah, come on, yeah. As soon as I catch him, we're gonna release that one, perfect. Okay, I thought about maybe keeping that one, but we're still gonna kind of hang out for one that maybe gets hooked a little bit poorly yet. The scissor kick is kicking. Back down you go, little guy. I'm gonna catch a couple more fish, but I might, I might wrap the video up soon and start another one. I've caught so many fish in this video already. We talked about different types of spoons. We talked a little bit about areas to look for. Plateaus, little plateaus. You know, like, it doesn't have to be a huge one. It could only be like, like 30 feet across, but something that has a consistent depth that's close to a drop off. Those can be little feeding flats. And up here, this actually is like a muddy, silty bottom. There's lots of crayfish that crawl around in this area. I know that because I've fished here in the past and done some underwater camera stuff. So, oh, flags, flags up, flags up. <clears throat> Oof, oof, peeling. Here we go. Here we go. Doesn't feel too bad. I don't think it's huge though. I don't think it's huge. Just a quality fish probably. I really like this rod for a dead stick rod a lot. That's not a bad fish at all. Not a bad fish. Oh, golden. Golden walleye. Well, another nice Walter on the tip up, 22-ish, maybe 23 if I'm lucky, but I'd say more 22. Golden, golden walleye. It's only three o'clock. This bite, I feel like could maybe just be getting ramped up, but I've caught over 20 walleye probably. It's been so good. I am gonna wrap this video up, but I am gonna film another one. So if you want to see a continuation to this day, hopefully I can catch a big mama. There'll be another video coming out 
from this day. And if I don't, maybe just all small fish. No, we'll put another video out because we'll find something else to talk about. I just started to try to make my videos. You know, I can't make them an hour long. Somewhere, find somewhere between 25 to 40 minutes is, does quite well for people. But thank you so much for watching and don't forget, get outside.